Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Spring Porter with Spring Solutions LLC. In this video, I'm doing something slightly different today. I'm going to be covering um, an interesting case that I was actually um, glancing at and that I just did further research on and it made me really upset. So I wanted to go over it with you um, just in case you were wondering what this case is all about if you see it because there are a lot of entries. Um, this kind of answers that question for you. And if you're interested in that, please stay tuned. Please note that I am not an attorney. This information is not indicated as legal advice. So I'm on the unclaimed funds locator. I was like, oh, you know, what's new? Uh, what has appeared on here since the last time that I checked? And it looks like this case from 2004, it's in Florida, the Southern District. I kept seeing the debtor's name appear on numerous entries and the same amount, 488.94. And it had numerous creditors. Um, they're all different. So these are indicators that one, it's a monster case and that this is some type of settlement because the same number appears and each creditor appears to be getting the same piece of the pie, right? Um, and so I went on court listener and or pacer rather and I pulled up this notice of the positive funds. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this guy, Lewis Robles, it looks like it is a company because it says PA right here at the end and there's an EIN number. I'm like, okay, so it's a company. Um, and later I found out that it's actually an attorney, probably an attorney's office. So here it is. Um, the deposit is $383,000, right? So all of these totaled up together is about this much. And I go down, it's 12 pages long, this deposit. I see numerous names on here. It looks like some are getting a little bit more. That's another company. Most of them are individuals. And I'm like, oh, this is $488.94. Most of them are getting that amount. It goes all the way down to 12 pages. So I'm like, let me Google this guy's name just for further information, right? So I Google it. Lo and behold, it's an attorney. He pleads guilty for theft of $13 million. Now, this case is from 2007. It just so happens that this was written in September too, but that's interesting. 2007, basically this attorney was um, in charge of torts. Um, he stole $13 million from his clients. Now his clients were um, aging laborers. A lot of them um, had been exposed to as asbestos and they were dying and sick of um, these cancer-related asbestos um, illnesses. And so they were waiting on settlements. So this attorney was in charge of the torts and he was supposed to divvy up the settlements um, checks and they were waiting on them to come in. And this happened in Miami, um, you know, that's where this lawyer was from and a lot of the cases um, were in that area. So he's living this lavish uh, lifestyle, waterfront mansion and is at Biscayne Bay in Florida. He had a private jet, vacation home in Colorado. And meanwhile, again, his clients were dying. So he pockets all this money. Um, it looks like he's probably still in jail because again, this was written in 2007. Um, he did plead guilty to three counts of mail fraud. Um, he was sentenced uh, December the 4th. This is way back again in 2007. So um, what's interesting to me is he stole all of this money way back in the mid-90s, um, 2000s, and then he files bankruptcy in 2004 um, because this says 04 right here. So it's 2004. But out of the $13 million, this is what's left over. So he's paid his lawyer. He's gone to court. He's done all this stuff, um, paid all his legal fees. And this is what dwindles down after the $13 million, the jet and all of that stuff has been sold off. So all of his clients are deceased uh, for the most part. I think they are deceased. The article goes on to say that a lot of his clients at the time in 2007, half of them were over the age of 80, right? So of those still alive, half are 80 years old or older. And these are his clients. So 25% of his clients were already deceased back in 2007. So it took so many years uh, for them to see a piece of the pie, and now they're not even here. And I actually did some of my own research. I, I went to the bottom of the um, the notice of re the positive report, and I called like maybe like three um, at random here, and it did look like a lot of them were deceased. But of course, their family members are still here. Um, and that's, it seems like a slap in the face to call him and say, hey, you have, you know, your deceased family member has 488 because of this crazy attorney. I mean, that's not enough. They've already suffered a lot 
they lost a family member and then probably dealing with like COVID issues too. And then like all this loss of money, loss of life, it just seems like that's a slap in the face. Um, so I don't know if this would really be worth it. I mean, it could be, um, there could be some family members out there that really need it that have moved beyond, again, this is from 2007. Um, and maybe they're in a, a little bit clearer space, clearer headspace to be able to process information like this. But if you're going to reach out to these people, um, just a, an air of caution with them because they've already suffered so much. So you just, I'm saying all this to say, you never know what someone is dealing with. It's good to have a background story and to do your research. Um, this is not just someone who filed bankruptcy and they're getting money back. These are actually people that have died um, and they were waiting on uh, funds from their attorney and they never got it. So this is slightly different. So you may want to um, use... Um, you know, some uh, sympathy when you're reaching out to these family members if you decide to do this. But it definitely is, it could be doable. Um, you're going to take a little piece of each one to kind of, you know, sack and add those because this amount is not terribly large um, at all. Um, this kind of reminds me of the Aaron Brockovich story um, in that movie or that case, but at least they got millions of those. So this attorney got millions, but then it dwindled down to that small amount. So that just kind of really makes me upset. I was actually going to email the writer who wrote this um, article, but again, it's from 2007 because they do leave their email and their telephone number. And I did some research on this, um, the lady who wrote this, the staff writer, but she's now a director and she's way out in California. And I wanted to at least caution her and say, hey, you know, there's actually a follow up to your article you did years ago. That $13 million is now like $380,000. $80,000. And even though, you know, the claimants are, could be deceased, you know, family members could be compensated um, for that because I would need a broader um, advertising and audience to just to reach out to someone who has a, a bigger platform, as opposed to me just calling people individually and family members, because that's something that um, is, is kind of noteworthy as somebody who did that much damage to people's lives, like their family members should at least be aware of it. Um, because the courts are not going to do their job. They send it to the last known address, as we know. And you see all of the mon money is there. Um, so they didn't really try to research or skip trace anybody. Um, so, yeah, these are the types of things that you come across. Different cases, different nuances, just interesting. Um, always do your research because you never know what you could stumble on. Um, you never know how interesting a case could be. Um, and this is another reason why you may want to, if you're reaching out to something this large, or maybe trying to research, you know, a staff writer for an article or something like that. It doesn't happen always, but you may want to have a company when you're doing that so that your personal information, again, is not out there. But again, uh, just information only in case you were reading it and you're trying to figure out what is what. This is basically what it is that I found out. Very interesting, uh, upsetting, but this is basically what happens. So uh, I hope that this is helpful in helping you understand how to read uh, court dockets and how to research cases on the unclaimed funds locator where there are multiple uh, creditors listed for the same amounts. This is how you would approach that. Um, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. If you are interested in the bankruptcy unclaimed funds course, please click on the link below uh, or email me if you have any questions, springsolutionsllc at gmail.com. Thank you and have a great weekend.